Hey everyone, thanks for joining for I Wrote the Mutt and You Can Too. We'll get started here in just one second. I'm pausing here for a brief moment for you to review our forward-looking statement. Uh, it'll also be available for a detailed review under resources if you would like. Hello Jamf Nation. My name is Michael Levenick, and I am the Enterprise Product Specialist for Security Solutions at Jamf, and I wrote the MUT. Today I'm going to give a brief introduction to who I am and also explain what the MUT is for those of you who haven't heard of it. After that, I'm going to talk a bit about my process and my journey for bringing MUT to life. Finally, we'll take a look at some of the resources that you have at your disposal if you want to create awesome stuff as well. So, as I mentioned, my name is Mike. I'm an enterprise product specialist at Jamf. I've been with Jamf almost six years now. I consider myself a maker, a tinkerer, and just generally all around a nerd. I'm also a private pilot. Flying is one of my favorite activities in the world, and if you've never tried it, I recommend calling up your nearest flight school and asking to book a discovery flight. It's an incredible experience. I'm also husband to the most amazing woman in the world. My wife, Kelsey, is also a champ. She works in the business operations department. Some of you may have had the pleasure of working with her as well. And finally, I am a dog dad. Our first human baby is due in November, but for now it's just Katie, shown here wearing a party hat for Dan Kubley's birthday. Katie is much of the inspiration behind the name of The Mutt. So now that you know who I am, it's important that I stress who I'm not. I'm not a developer. I have no formal programming training other than a visual basics class that I took back in high school. I've never been a professional programmer in any capacity for any company that I've ever worked for. Developing the MUT is simply something that I do for fun on the side when I decide that eight hours a day in front of my Mac just wasn't enough. <laughs> And that's the main reason that I truly believe that anybody can do what I did. However, I recognize that starting a project like this can be intimidating and daunting. So I thought that sharing my process, my struggles, some of my screw ups uh, and lessons that I learned the hard way, uh, it might encourage other folks to dive in, give this a shot, build something new and awesome. After all, one of the things that makes Jamf Nation so incredible is the power of Jamf and. So what is the MUT? MUT stands for Mass Update Tool, and it's a native macOS app written in Swift that allows Jamf admins to make bulk updates to inventory records in their Jamf Pro database. Whether they need to rename their iPads, add usernames to Macs, or move devices between static groups and pre-stage scopes. Admins fill out a template and upload a comma-separated spreadsheet with serial numbers of their devices and values to be updated. The MUT then submits those updates to Jamf Pro via the API for the updates to be made. MUT is a project a little over five years in the making, and the road towards MUT began when my manager, Ian, asked me for help creating a script for one of his customers. They had leased a bunch of iPads in three different groups, and they were originally told that they simply had to return the iPads, and then they found out after the fact that the iPads actually had to be returned in those same three groups. They needed a way to mark off those groups in Jamf Pro in mass, and they had a spreadsheet ready. So I created a script and we set up a call to get everything going. It was a super rewarding experience, building a tool from nothing and then solving a real problem. But people caught wind that I was building scripts for the API, and eventually I had a massive folder on my computer uh, full of a bunch of different scripts to update various attributes in Jamf Pro. It was super messy, and I thought there's got to be a better way. So I created the dynamic updater script. It was effectively a giant logic tree that you could walk through with prompts to ask you what you wanted to update. Dynamic updater could update all sorts of things, and it was a standalone script. It didn't have a bunch of different scripts to update different things. So it was a pretty big improvement on a giant folder of stuff, but I decided again that there had to be a better way. And I'd also been wanting to learn a real programming language for some time. So I decided to dive into learning Swift using the dynamic updater as a learning project. After all, I already understood the framework of what it needed to do. I just needed to write it in a new language and how hard could that be? 
But as I mentioned previously, I have basically no formal development training. Uh, and this meant that my learning process included a lot of YouTube tutorials and Stack Overflow articles. Now, maybe that's true of most developers taking on new projects, uh, but I found that many of these tutorials assumed a foundation of knowledge that I simply didn't have, and I struggled a bit. Google became my best friend for several months, and when all else failed, I knew a few people who were programmers that I could bounce ideas off of when I was really stuck on something. I basically just kept trying things until it worked, sort of brute forcing my way to a solution, if you will. <laughs> I'm not sure if all developers work like that, but with my experience, writing a program is basically coding until I ran into an issue then bang my head against the wall on that issue for hours or even days sometimes until finally something would eventually click and I could fix the issue. Then I'd move that past, move past that issue and run headlong into another issue, rinse and repeat until the project was done. Needless to say, Apple's WWDC intro video last year really struck a chord with me. I slapped together an initial proof of concept, just proving to myself that I could update records in Jamf Pro via the API using Swift. At the time, it was called the Fancy Update Tool, named in part for one of my friends nicknamed Fancy, uh, who helped me learn the basics of Xcode and Swift. Now, it may not look like much, but learning to build this GUI was the first major milestone in MUT development, and it took me several days. After a bit of polish, the first version of the fancy update tool, not yet known as MUT, uh, was released. But the initial version was really just a GUI slapped on top of Bash Script, that dynamic updater. I wasn't using native Swift networking functionality. I was literally calling the curl binary in the background using the legacy equivalent of process in Swift. Don't do that. <laughs> I mentioned I'd be sharing some lessons that I learned the hard way. This is one of them. Swift has native uh, HTTP functionality for a reason. And I would say that learning to use that native Swift networking functionality was the second major milestone in MUT development. I banged my head against the wall on that particular issue for quite a long time. Sometime later, I released version two, which I named JSS MUT for Jamf Software Server Mass Update Tool. It had a new name, a DMG installer, a new icon designed by myself. Now I mentioned I was never a developer. I should also mention that I'm not a graphic designer either, although maybe that goes without saying. One of the other cool features of MUT version two was that it had the ability to enforce mobile device names. And this was a huge deal for a lot of users. Folks really wanted to get their hands on MUT at this point. So I went out and I registered jssmutt.com to make the app more available. Usage of MUT started to grow. Around jssmutt version 2.1 is when I decided to get my Apple developer license. I updated the app to follow Apple's human interface guidelines, and I jumped through all of the hoops needed to get the app listed on the macOS App Store. That macOS App Store availability was a huge deal for a lot of customers, especially the security conscious ones. Utilization of MUT began to take off in earnest. Unfortunately, the interface was a bit clunky, and some users had issues figuring out what to do, so I decided to try to fix that next. MUT version 3 had quite a few changes. For starters, JSS was no longer going to be called the JSS, and therefore I no longer wanted my app to be called JSS MUT, and it became simply the MUT. The logo received a significant upgrade as well, removing the JSS styling cues from the background and it got a slightly cuter dog, also designed by me. Version three is also the first version to utilize those native Swift HTTP sessions instead of being a GUI slapped on top of a curl binary. I wanted a logging window uh, or a log window with more verbose output for the end user, all in all some huge improvements. Now I mentioned that I decided to make the app more approachable and I wanted to walk users through the usage and have some in-app guidance. I spent a lot of time learning how to pass data from one view to another so that I could break up the various tasks of the app into separate windows and keep the interface more clean looking. Learning to pass that data between views was another huge milestone uh, that I had banged my head against uh, for quite a long time. And I was really proud when I finally figured it all out. Unfortunately, this is where I learned that I'm also not a UX designer, and users hated the change. The general consensus was that the interface 
was awkward, childish, overly handholdy, and frankly, a bit demeaning. Uh, I received some pretty scathing reviews on the App Store, and also some candid feedback from colleagues that the interface needed a lot of work. My heart sank. Not only was I super proud of all of my learning and progress, but I thought that it was important that the new native Swift networking was used in the app. After all, it fixed one of my most embarrassing gaffes in building the early versions of the app. So I took some of the feedback from customers and I went back to the drawing board. And honestly, learning to parse that feedback and channel it into positive change uh, was something else that I really had to learn while developing this app. I learned not everybody is gonna like every change or decision that you make, but you can take that feedback and use it to improve things for the better. And so after a few more weeks of work, I released 3.2. It had the logging that I loved, the new logo, and the native Swift networking. And it also had a return to the nice, clunky, overly busy interface that end users apparently loved. I promise I'm not better. This version of Mutt actually served for quite a long time, and it was well loved by many users. But I still wanted to clean the interface up, and there were some new features that I wanted to implement as well. So I spent some time actually studying UX design and looking at some of my favorite apps and how they were laid out and how they handled some of these challenges. That inspiration went into Mutt version four. Version four also got a slightly modified logo along with some new endpoints and fields that it could update. I actually rewrote Mutt version four pretty much from the ground up. I had learned quite a lot about proper programming techniques, and I began actually putting my code into functions and classes. I also started making some logical determinations about things such as serial number versus Jamf Pro ID, for example, which cleaned up the interface quite a bit. Finally, I used what I had learned about passing data from one view to another, and I moved the login window to a modal slide over that cleaned up the interface pretty significantly. It also allowed me to check credentials prior to submitting a massive update run. In previous versions of Mutt, if you supplied invalid credentials, Mutt would simply begin sending them to the server over and over, and the server would throw authentication errors on every attempt until you manually canceled the run. Not great. This is when I really hit my stride and started squashing bugs and implementing features. One of the other things I learned firsthand is that there's a direct correlation between new features that you want to implement and bugs that you introduce into your code. And 4.0 had quite a few bugs. But version 4.1 resolved an old line break parsing issue. Version 4.2 was the first version to be properly notarized and had some more bug fixes. And finally, version 3 fixed some dark mode display issues. After spending a few versions squashing bugs, I had a pretty solid product on my hands and I was pretty proud. And so that's where the project sat for quite a long time. Mutt 4.3 did pretty much everything that folks wanted it to do. It was stable and solid, and I stopped working on it for quite a while. Until one day, my friend and colleague, Ben Whitus, contacted me looking for help with a bash problem. I told him I was rusty in bash and that he should just write it in Swift. <laughs> to which he responded he didn't know Swift, and I said, perfect. I showed him a few things in Swift, much in the same way that Fancy had shown me three years earlier. And a week later, Ben came back and he showed me his progress on his project. It was awesome. I was super impressed with all that he had accomplished in such a short period of time, having known nothing when he began. So I told him I was looking to work on a new version of Mutt, and I asked him if he'd be willing to help me out with Mutt version 5. He thought that sounded cool, so we got to work. There were two main features we were hoping to cover. The first was that people had been asking for ages for the ability to update multiple attributes in a single run. And the other was that we had heard that pre-stage scope updates were coming to the API. We had dreams of having release day support for that new feature in Jamf Pro. We recognized we were going to be making some pretty drastic changes. So we rebranded Mutt version four as Mutt Classic and stuck it on the App Store. We got to work on Mutt version 5 and pretty much rewrote it from the ground up all over again. We stood pre-stage scope endpoints were located in the new Universal API, and we had to learn how that worked. It involved creating new authentication functions and formatting our data in a completely different way. Working as a two-person development team was another thing that we both had to learn how to do when working on this project. We set up a Trello board uh, that we used to keep track of our progress, and we split up various tasks to accomplish. 
We worked in two week sprints with a stand up in the off week where we would share our progress and help each other through the issues that we are running into. Eventually, the tool started to take shape. But version 5 got proper dark mode support, it got those mass updates everyone wanted, and also pre staged scope updates and a super streamlined interface. Users of MUT could now simply fill out a template and upload it. It would show them a preview of all of the changes that were going to be made, and then they could submit those updates. There was a clickable table preview of all of the changes, which was 100% Ben's work, and I hope he's proud of it because I think it's awesome. On release day, we went out to celebrate. We had achieved our goal of release day support for the pre-stage scope API functionality. It was an awesome feeling. This little tool that started as a bash script built for one specific customer now had tens of thousands of downloads in the app store and hundreds of unique visitors head to jssmutt.com every single week. A little while later, another Jamf named Andrew reached out to us and he asked if we would mind if he cleaned up some of our API functions and made them more efficient. Uh, and thus Mutt had three contributors. We spent some time squashing a few more bugs and that brings us to the current version of Mutt, Mutt version 5.2.0. It's been a long journey. Creating Mutt was not an easy process and it was not always smooth sailing. There was a lot of banging my head against the wall and I learned a ton for example, I also learned how to use Git and began using it for version control. When I made MUT open source, I considered wiping out the Git commit history because frankly, there's some rather embarrassing stuff in there. But I decided uh, to leave them all as an example in hopes that others could learn from my struggles and perhaps be inspired to build something, even if they feel that they don't know how. Here you can see my initial commit, followed by a commit titled, I have no idea how to get. Then I decided how to learn how to use branches and merge them, which led to this fun series of commits, including final before merge to master. Please let me merge. Please again with three Z's for emphasis. Also me slamming my keyboard in frustration and the word test. Finally, followed by the merging of the delegate branch into master. Also found in the commit history is it works sync baby. Yeah, let's do this. I hate this commit. Note the massive amount of code deletion on that one. And the classics just about done TM followed shortly by I'm a gosh dang idiot. <laughs> I promise my commit comments got much more helpful and verbose when we began actually developing MUT as a team. This was when I was working alone. As I mentioned, there was a ton that I learned when creating MUT. I learned an entirely new programming language. I had to learn native switch H native Swift HTTP sessions. I struggled my way through Git. I learned to pass the data from one view to another. And Ben finally got that table view to work, which is something that I had tried over and over again and finally gave up on previously. Probably most importantly, we learned to do all of that while working together on a project and building our code in a way that could work with each other's code, which is harder than it sounds. So now it's your turn, Jamf Nation. You folks are awesome. Jamf Nation is a big part of what makes Jamf great. And if you couldn't tell, I'm a huge believer in the power of Jamf and. I have no idea what the next awesome app will be, but I do know that Jamf Nation is filled with tons of people smarter than me, with better ideas than me, who know of needs that I haven't thought of, and those needs can be solved by apps that I haven't built. Jamf is a believer in the power of Jamf and as well. If you navigate to jamf.com forward slash developers, you'll be brought to the Jamf developer landing page, which is filled with tons of resources to help you build the next great Jamf integration. There's API reference guides and code samples to get you started. The Jamf GitHub is also filled with some awesome apps that you can reverse engineer and learn from. They're all open source and ready for you to dig through their embarrassing commit history as well. Finally, there's MacAdmins.org. It's a community of Mac admins who are super smart and super helpful. They have a Slack channel that you can join, start chatting with folks who have similar needs to you and a similar desire to fix those needs with awesome tools. Now go forth Jamf Nation and make awesome stuff. After all, I built the mutt and I know that you can do it too. Thank you.